With the forming done, let's now go into the actual strip design. We'll take the information that we've learned here in the different forming stations and use that to build the strip. Simply now I'm going to switch over to my wizard that's designed just for strip design. And now we'll use our blank part so that we can do our nesting. I want to do a two out in this case, two of the same part. Again, we could have done right hand, left hand had I mirrored some of the forms that I needed. As I build up this uh, layout for the nesting, you can see I'm going to keep track of the scrap and all the uh, other information on screen. Here I'm setting up the distance, what I want it to look like as far as distance between the parts, between the stations. Do a second row, do I want it rotated at 180 degrees? So pretty much you have full control over how you would want to rotate and orient the part in the nesting. It'll give you what your uh, uh, scrap and everything is as you do it. Now maybe here just playing with it so you can see a few things. Um, probably perhaps try to force it to shift so that it intertwines like you see here. And the attempt at that might be to keep the coil width narrower. Uh, here we're going to set it up so that we have our different stations opposed to one another. So I'll either decide on the actual distance in between, or maybe I want to change the overall width so that that's the, the coil that I would order, uh, whatever the preference is. So it's important to know there's lots of easy to use tools for uh, setting up the nesting. Now I'm looking at the number of stations I want, or there be the individual stations here where I have uh, things set for my punch area, or down the road where I want more uh, stations for putting in forms. So. All this can be edited to later. At any time I can go back, change the number of stations, uh, change the uh, distance in between, whatever my preference is. Do I want to work left to right, right to left? Again, I can set that here as part of my preference. What I'm doing now is establishing my carrier. So we'll just add a few references as we build up the carrier. And also what I'm doing is establishing where I want my punches to go. Really, it's like the same operation at one time. So just a few references so that I can build up the web of the carrier. Which you'll see just simply dragging across here using my sketcher. As I work with the sketcher, you're going to see lines flashing vertically and horizontally. That's telling me when things are constrained. Maybe it's found something it's parallel to or perpendicular to. We'll throw some dimensions in. Here is the carrier strip, and then you can see the webbing that's going to actually hold the part. Uh, from here I may want to establish where my pilot is going to go. Place it right there, we'll give that a dimension. And so that will be the diameter of the pilot. Everything is editable, you can quickly change things on the fly, or come back later and make that change quick location dimension establish where that's at as the sketch is finished you might say it turns that pink color if it's blue that means it's not constrained not dimensioned maybe I need to get a webbing out here to establish what that punch shape is in between my stations and now I've got some areas to deal with that uh, are out here off the edge so maybe I want to create a punch that's going to come out into the material guide area. Maybe something like that. Of course, I'd oppose it on the other side. This being a two out of the same part, I could uh, easily build across, creating something symmetrical in the sketch. Uh, typically, you might individually build them like this if they're right hand, left hand, just because of minute differences that may be there in the right or left hand. Not all right hand, left hand parts are truly right hand, left hand. So whichever the preference is, particularly whatever the case is involved per each job. So again, further dimensions to show me where my punches are going to break. If you notice I'm not really concerned about everything being exactly perfect. I'm not going back and trimming up overlaps in my sketch where punches occur. I'll just close that area off on both sides. That's where I'll uh, stop those punches. That would be like the seam or the breakpoint between those two punches. I'm doing just a simple line because I've got nice tools for creating the overlaps. All right, so maybe something like that to right. establish all the different punches that I'm going to need. With that we'll focus then on the simpler ones. 
it makes sense that the very first thing I would put into my strip would be my pilot punch. Select the pilot, select the location, where do I want it to go. The first hit is going to occur here at the end and then it carries on down the strip. There you see all the holes for that punch. And all the punches are going to work that way. It's simply a matter of picking what I want to punch, then selecting its first location, and accepting it. And here we've got a, a number of these simple small round punches that will knock out fairly quickly. You notice a green surface is left behind as we build these punches, these punch areas. Uh, that green surface in this case I'm going to use to locate and establish the diameter of these punches. These punches are going to come from a catalog. So just as I might order something from my Dayton provider for Dayton punches, I'm going to go ahead and order the same way here in my catalogs. I uh, could use other catalogs too. Uh, it's whatever uh, we come up with. Our list of catalogs is growing more and more extensive too as our users need more and more catalogs. Here I'm focusing on the EDM, wire EDM punches. Now, those are pretty straightforward because I had the shape. Now I'm going after these other ones in the middle perhaps of between the two stations. And as I build this I want to put some conditions on it. I want to put some rounds on these corners. All right, so it's just a matter of selecting where, putting it in there. That now gives me that perimeter that I need. Now we'll go ahead and we'll punch that. Where do I want it to occur? Where I initially built it? No, maybe a next station over. So you've got full control over where you want it to go, plus you can always go back and make the edits that you need. All right. now perhaps now we'll go and do the other side and do the same thing. We put the radiuses on the four corners right there at the carrier, as you see here. So now that will affect the shape of the punch and also the hole that it gets punched into. Set that up to pose the previous punch. There it punches it, carries it on down the strip. Now with these wire EDM punches, those green faces I'm going to use to actually create the 3D geometry of the punch. If you notice as I pick, I'm picking inside an area and establishes the perimeter, and then I pick outside of it, even though there's no face underneath it because this is going to go into the material guide area, it still allows me to pick that perimeter. So it's a very intuitive tool. Now in this case I pick that edge but what I want to do is establish a distance around it. So I'm going to extend that edge. And the idea behind this is I want to create an overlap. Uh, that way the punch on one edge will shear off the other edge. All right, so now I know I'm going to clean up that outer distance along the outside of the coil. All right, that looks good. That's what we want to punch. And you can see here in the punch display that the overlap is there. That's exactly what I want. We'll go ahead and position it, and that's done. Now you see how it's carried on down the strip as well. Again, in picking the punch area, notice I pick inside a zone, it captures it, then I pick in an adjacent zone, and it stretches it out further. So a very intuitive tool to help me build this up. That's why when I sketch, I'm not worried about everything being absolutely perfect. Now we'll go ahead to the cookie function, and we'll build that extended edge around. That is what we want. Looks good. We'll go ahead now and punch that side. I'm just pretty much working my way down the wizard to create each of these different punches. All right, we got a couple more to do. We need to get the area inside. All right, right there. Again, I want to put radiuses on that. So we'll pick the particular corners where we need those radiuses. Alright, now where do we want that to go? Let's find an area where it's got enough distance. That looks good. Again, if um, you're designing you find that they're too close together, we can go back and we can relocate where that punch occurs. Finally, again, putting radiuses on the opposite side. Uh, 
the same punch could be used and simply rotate it over on the opposite side that we could do inside a tool design if we wanted to. This shows you what it would look like to build the strip with all the information shown uh, for quoting purposes also for layout purposes, uh, tooling review purposes. Now we'll get that area in between the last punch and I'm just going to pick that zone because I want to create my overlaps a different way. Here on the advanced function if I pick the end you notice it does this little cookie cutter so when I have punches next to one another I can eliminate that shear corner uh, like you see here. So it's a handy tool it's fully dynamic you can change it however you want in this case I'm simply going to extend that out I can play with the radius, I can change the offset, I can change the distance. That's how I can establish the overlap I have between my punches. Now that's built, looks good to me. We'll go ahead and punch that out. That'll occur down here at the end of the punch series. Very simple, very straightforward. Finally, we have the other side to do. Capture that area. We already know the type of extension we want, so we'll go to the cookie function. It knows what we did last time. We used it, so it's going to put the same values. Go ahead and punch that down at the end. As you see here. And so very quickly we've established all our punches, and you can see how the strip is being formed. With that, all we have left to do now is to bring the forming shapes in. That's simply a matter of picking the, sh the form and then positioning where we want it to go on the strip. So however I develop those forms, it's not like I had to follow any specific order. It's not like I couldn't change my mind and go back and do something different. Right? But here I'm logically placing them in the progression of order of operations that would occur in my strip. Now we'll get those last few forms in. I can pick off of the form itself, or if I need to, I can pick right off of the strip. And here you see I just copied that over to the opposite side. Now I've got my 45 degree flange. Changes the color in the forming station so that I know I've used it. And then again, I don't have to follow the order. Maybe I want to put the last one in now. And that looks good. That would be my final form. And then, well, I'd need an idle in there. So let's go back and pick that 45 degree flange. Give us some distance between those last two stations. All right, so there, very quickly, we've built our strip. We've got all our forms in place. We have all our punches in place. We know the overall size, the shapes involved, everything. And let's do a few zoom ups so you can see all the detail has been captured now in our strip and each of the different punches. So with that, we have that established. We have all the information we need to take this on over into our die design.